I was around this country as a kid. I'm from Idaho. I was born in Boise. Um, I took up prospecting and I worked around California, Arizona, Nevada, and wound up back here in Idaho City. Uh, and try and be different because you can't hardly get anywhere in this industry by copying anybody. big enough to hold everything I owned for lots of years and I went all over the country for uh, making camps and living out of that truck and my teepee and pulling my jeep with me wherever I went. So anyway I was very active in mining throughout the late 70s uh, up until the early 90s and at that point uh, the price of metal dropped so drastically that mining and mining equipment wasn't really working anymore. And so in looking around for something else to do, I happened upon Knife World uh, from magazines and so on. Uh, I took Gavin with me. We attended the Eugene Knife Show in Oregon and spent the three days there. and decided on the drive home that we could probably make a knife. So we came home and started working on knife designs and uh, that was probably in the mid 90s and we've been pretty much at it ever since then. So that's how we got started. We've had this lathe since we first started. It's a South Bend lathe from like the 1940s or something. Uh, still works great and holds tolerances and so all of our lathe parts are made on this lathe right here. I love it. This is the kind of our main manual lathe that we use. So how old is this one? Uh, this is probably 50s, 50s vintage, yeah. This is a Bird King grinder and we put a variable speed motor on it so that we can control the speed down to very slow to very fast. These are parts that we uh, patch together. And then this contraption here moves the belt from one side to the other for grinding bevels so that you can get so the belt will overlap the wheel. And so instead of having to go up there and turn the knob and screw it over, this just shifts it over. So this machine, uh, this was our first, I guess, CNC machine. Uh, it's a retrofit, so it's actually it started off as a regular mill and then somebody else added the computer and the servo drives to it. And so the dog lock, the first folding knife design we did was all made on this. And it works as a good place to, to hold my stereo. So it has some function. <laughs> Raider, we've got another pedestal grinder over there that's made out of the uh, rear housing of a differential. In the mechanical world, uh, sometimes things are made that maybe we weren't quite ready to afford, but can oftentimes find a way to fabricate a close substitute out of whatever material that we have at hand or close at hand. And so that's mostly what we've done here is just try to make up for the lack of an abundant funding that would allow us to go buy anything we ever wanted. And so instead we make anything we ever want. So this one, again, we called the pony knife. It was the first design that we made any numbers at all. A unique thing about this is the material on the handles are made of horse hoof, a horse's foot. Uh, but anyway, we went through quite a learning curve to figure out how to make that work. So in this example, is 15 years old and I've worn it every day for those 15 years. This concho, I made the patterns for that and we had a jeweler duplicated in sterling silver and that holds the sheath together in the back. But 
And then a close relative of the pony knife is the one we call the gal leg. And this one has a shape of a lady's leg here. And this is a horse hoof stack and then hardwood, probably ironwood on that one. But anyway, I started off making these two designs while Gavin was uh, still in school. And he made a simple design of his own, uh, a small fixed blade that uh, he sold locally to hunters and even his teachers at school. As Gavin started to uh, work more in the shop and we went to more knife shows, we began to feel like the big demand was for folding knives with an unusual mechanism. So this is what the beetle looks like with the scales off. There's just a little, there's a little notch there that this roller goes into. And so when you're holding it, that's what you're holding, is that, that notch into that roller. Otherwise, it just rolls out. And then this little uh, profile there, that's actually the detent closed. So that's, that's why you feel the little detent, because it rolls around that and then goes into place. You come up with the idea, design it out, you make the first few parts and you assemble it and it all, well actually usually doesn't work. And then, then you redesign it and, and finally you come up with a prototype that actually works. Uh, that's the exciting part. It, it really gets into a grind then when you have to make a hundred of them. That's where we start to drag and get tired of knife making. And then we start with a new mechanism, a new design and it kind of re-energizes the whole, or the whole company and then we start, you know, going ahead with, with new ideas. <laughs> so this is kind of a little hidden corner of our world back here. I lived in the teepee for oh, probably six or seven years, uh, prospecting and moving around the country and living on mining claims. I found it was an interesting way to live. I made more money than I needed and spent very little and, and got away with it for a long time. So this tent isn't really set up for living. This is set up for uh, just company coming occasionally. We have friends that come by, so we like to bring their kids and spend the night and so on. But I lived in a teepee full time for quite a few years and really came to appreciate the underlying engineering that makes all this work and makes the smoke go up the hole like it's supposed to. But yeah, I lived on mining claims for years and uh, did small scale mining for economics and sold mining claims and lived full time in a tent and drove one of those old army trucks and pulled that little jeep behind it and traveled all over the country so I've uh, been around mining just about forever and I really appreciate it and enjoy it. The teepee was a big part of that for me, place to live. A game we like to play is uh, what if. What if a knife did this or what if it did that? And so once you can come up with a basic idea, then you can kind of engineer uh, a mechanism to solve that particular problem and make the knife do what you want it to do. Well, for us, it all starts with uh, some type of objective to make a knife cooler or stronger or different. We come up with that basic idea and then engineer that idea to work in a knife. From there, we just start drawing and throwing in ideas. This is kind of an antique drawing program. It's an old, it's a DOS program. It's only a two-dimensional. I initiate a lot of the designs in this program and do them very simply. And if I can make the geometry work in this program, then Gavin puts it into one of his more sophisticated programs. Uh, where he's able to develop machine code uh, that will talk to our machining center and then from there then we can start building prototypes. Uh, and then put it all together 
into a, a finished prototype, which then gets changed again into the final prototype. Uh, then we like to make our own run of kind of a, a finished version of that design that we sell to customers. Uh, and that gives us a good chance to go to shows and talk to people and get some feedback on what people like and don't like. And then from there we can take that and go to a final version that then we present to a manufacturer and then they actually take the design to the next level where they manufacture it and sell it to the end users. Well, this is prototype number 1A. This is the very first prototype, I think, that we ever made. This is the dog walk mechanism. But uh, we satisfied ourselves that the mechanism was doable by doing something very crude. As you can see here, the spring forces this bolt forward and that locks the blade, and then you pull it back here. So it's only half a knife and no, no handle on the top side. It just very, very crude and simply made. This was our first folding knife design. Um, this one is one that, that we made. Um, we licensed this design to Columbia River Knife and Tool. So we never really had the intention of becoming knife designers. Uh, it just kind of happened that way. The president of Columbia River was a friend of a friend of ours. He just uh, ended up talking to them. They seen the knife and really liked it and it kind of just went from there. And so, and so it works by a sliding bolt that moves backward against spring pressure to unlock the blade. It's a very secure lock and very simple, very robust. And we did make the cover of Blade Magazine with this, but it was our first cover of Blade Magazine. And so we started then to focus on uh, improvements to the mechanism that we might be able to make for a folding knife. We've turned that into our main business, is just coming up with designs for companies. So this one is the mud knife. And the idea with this is we wanted to make a knife that could be completely sealed and you could literally drop it in sand and mud uh, and it wouldn't get inside the internal workings of the mechanism. Okay, so this is kind of our plastics room uh, where we do a lot, of, uh, a lot of urethane casting. On the mud knife, we, did, we made our own seals uh, and we injection molded them ourselves. So this is a, a little bench top injection mold machine. Around the pivot, there are tiny little seals in there that uh, ride against the handle frame so that no dirt or debris can get inside the pivot of the knife. And so you load plastic pellets up in the top here, squirt this full of plastic, and then it would cool and take it out, and then we'd have our plastic part for our seal on the mud nut. Uh, this is the, the lock system here, so by pulling back on that, unlocks it. And so that's all encased around this little rubber boot. Uh, we built our own molds and vulcanized our own rubber to make the little boot. So from this mechanism, uh, we actually ventured off into the ram, which is the same mechanism, uh, except that we added a flipper to it so that it flips out like that. So then next we designed uh, the Toad, which is one of the very few designs that didn't actually make it to a company. So the way this mechanism works is it's a toggle system. So there's a, there's a short little link here and a long link there. And so when this point, when this point goes past a straight line, then the knife's locked and won't feed backwards. And so by manipulating these toggle pins, you can break that joint there and then pull the knife closed like that. It, it works a lot like your thumb where you have you have three points here and once this point drops below a straight line then any pressure this way won't collapse it until that point comes up and now and now it'll bend backwards. So we went back to the drawing board and tried to figure out a way to make this mechanism so that it was exposed and people could actually see what was going on. Uh, and so that's how the ET came about which is the the same mechanism, but all external. This one is the ET. The way this works is it pops open and closed just like that. Uh, and it's also a toggle mechanism. So, so once this joint goes past center, the knife's locked. And so to unlock it, you just manipulate that joint just like that. Um, 
This one has a safety on it, so you roll this forward and that locks the blade closed so that you can carry it by this carabiner. So you can put it on your belt loop or backpack or gear, whatever you want. This knife is the tie lock, which uh, of course Chris Reeve is manufacturing. And this is actually Chris Reeve's, uh, one of his early prototypes. Uh, but the way this works is you just open it like that and this is the spring and so that actually engages in a notch so as it rides over it clicks in and that's what locks the knife uh, and to close it you can just push up on that stud just like that so this is how i scribe the blades so that i have a, a line down the center just through that little thing And then I have lines to go to the grind. <laughs> I used to build a little custom handle fixture for each new knife, and I found I just like the vice grips better. It gives me a, a bigger platform to be able to, uh, more sensitivity on control on my angle. Well, I first started making uh, wooden knives. So my dad had me cut out a bunch of wooden blanks and I'd grind those until I could get them straight and then uh, then I just started on mild steel and just ground and ground and ground and ground until I finally could hold straight lines and keep a even bevel and finally was able to grind a knife. Now it feels second nature. I mean, you just put it up there and you grind and you got a straight line and everything works. Pretty difficult learning. It took a lot of scrap metal to finally get a bevel to come out straight. The main thing is just to do what you like and uh, and try and be different. Uh, so you just gotta kind of find your own little niche and, and what makes you unique and and, uh, and if you've already been in the industry or some type of industry, take, take whatever knowledge or expertise you've gained from that and try and uh, put that into knives somehow uh, so that you get something different. And it's just that easy. If you had any advice for budding knife makers, what would it be? Uh, go get a job. <laughs> no. We actually had to buy that one back. We, we didn't have any. Yeah, we bought that at a knife show. <laughs> we found out we ended up selling them all and didn't have any. How much did you pay for it <laughs> to get it back? Uh, I don't know if I remember, but... Yeah, pretty good deal. The person that had it didn't know much about it. Uh, yeah, so we might have stolen, but <laughs> but anyway, we got a good deal on it.